Well, hello. Welcome again to the workshop of Wood Spun Around. This is Doug, and I am so glad to have you with me in the shop again. Uh, this is hashtag week again. <laughs> hashtag for August uh, 2022. And this month's hashtag week is fruit. Uh, I was a little surprised. I've never quite understood the whole idea behind turn fruit, but uh, uh, here's what I'm doing. Um, what you see here on the on the lathe is a piece of oak. It is the bull nose of a church pew. Uh, this these pews were solid oak. Uh, you've seen seen me turn some oak from these pews before, uh, whether it's pins or small bowls. Uh, this is the bull nose, the very front edge that rounded over section, uh, glued up uh, white oak, as far as I can tell, and. Uh, this was just a good way for me to use up some of these bullnose pieces. Turning a, not exactly a sphere, but a spherical type, a semi-spherical type of a, a small fruit. Uh, you'll see more about what it is here in a few moments. Um, but this is just kind of a fun piece. Uh, there will be some coloring. Um, I, I'm actually going to turn three pieces I'm only going to show you two of them because two are, are almost identical. Not exactly the same, but they're very similar. I was debating. In fact, I had pretty well decided not to do this, this uh, challenge. And uh, something reminded me of a song way back in the 70s. Uh, in fact, it's further back in the 70s than even I remembered. I thought it was mid to late 70s. And turns out uh, it was recorded in 1971 yes I'm that old but it was a fun song kind of a nonsensical kind of a song uh, played on all the the uh, hit radio stations the top 100 kind of stations um, a bit of a pop song but like I said it was nonsensical if you haven't already guessed uh, um, you will hear before too much longer I've basically turned it. About the only thing left to do is the coloring, uh, some sanding. Um, didn't really show the sanding, but there are my two colors, black and forest green, that are going to go on here. I'm going to start with the black, give a kind of a base, uh, but it also will make that forest green a little more vibrant. Um, pulling out my very cheap. Uh, airbrush system spraying on that base layer of black made a couple of mistakes here one I really didn't need to have a solid solid black underneath it uh, even though that's what I did I used up all the the dye that I had poured into the airbrush and then uh, I'm going to sand it off here in just a minute. One of my big mistakes is I did not wait uh, for it to dry, and I did not help it dry. With I've got a, a hair dryer right there beside me. I don't know why I didn't pick it up and use it on this little piece. Show you there. I'm going to go back to 100 grit and start to sand. And as you can see, it doesn't just jump off. I've got to work it pretty good. And I'm getting an awful lot of black on the sandpaper. That's just indicative of that dye not being really dry yet. It's, it's dry to the touch, but it's not really dry yet. So I should have dried, uh, you know, use my hair dryer or give it 15, 20 minutes. Let it dry. Uh, it does blow off of the sandpaper fairly easy. You see there, I'm back to almost clean. But it does take me just a little while to get this black sanded back the way I want it. I don't want it all gone, but I want the, the black dye, uh, sanded back to the place where uh, it, there's more wood than dye there. The black should remain down in the pores, in any deeper spots within the wood, but not uh, a solid mass at all. Um, but we're getting there. It's, it's coming up. It's, it doesn't take too long to get it all sanded back. Just cleaning off the sandpaper again with my compressed air. We're done with the black. We've sanded it back. Now let's put on a bit of green. And 
It's one of the things I find kind of interesting about this is the the black really doesn't show up, but it does make that green that much greener. Just a bit more vibrant. It doesn't really darken it, but it allows the true green color to shine through. So we got it. Uh, uh, I had a little extra, so I went ahead and poured it back in the bottle. Uh, it seems like I dried it and put another second coat on. And then right here, you what you see is I'm putting on a little bit of sanding sealer just to seal in that, that gray dye, or the green dye. I don't want it coming off my hands or off on anybody else's hands. Um, if I put it in a bowl, I don't want it to come off on the bowl. I'm using this paper towel to kind of knock it back just a little bit. But that sanding sealer is not dry yet, and so uh, it does pull a, a little bit of the extra dye off. And then I'm gonna come back in here with my Axe Polish. Uh, this is not the abrasive paste, but just the, the just the polish. Um, I'm not real concerned about this piece being shiny at all. What I'm looking for is uh, the protection of the piece, and I just want it to feel good. So I get a little bit of wax on there, let it sit for just a minute or two, and then we're going to come back and buff it really good. Speaking of the axe, if you want to try the axe abrasive and, and the polishing restoring paste, uh, you can get 15% off at checkout. If you'll use the code DOUG15, uh, you, you go to the axewoodpaste.com website. It's the only place you can get axe products. You order it there, and as you're getting ready to check out, there's a place for a discount code. Put in DOUG15, and you'll get a 15% discount. Now you can probably tell what this is. It's not a very big lime, but it is a lime. If you've ever been to uh, South Florida, to the Keys, uh, you see the key lime trees. Uh, we all know what a key lime pie is, and, and they're made with key limes down there. Well, key limes are not very big. This is about as big as a key lime is. Uh, they're small. Um, if you ever go down to the Keys, you'll see the signs to be careful of the key deer. Key deer are a little tiny deer that grow in the keys, uh, not just Key West, but all of the keys. Um, and, and so the roadways are, all have, well, the major highway going down from uh, the mainland of Florida all the way down to Key West. Uh, if you're on an island, to the left and to the right will be a fence on, along the road. And that is to help keep the deer off of the road. Hundreds of those little key deer are killed every year by getting into the road and people don't see them. They are very, very small. So uh, you have to be very careful. They're endangered and so they're protected uh, by those fences. But here we've got a, a key lime. Just parting the ends, getting it nice and small on both ends so that I can cut that little nib end off, sand it without any trouble. Um, in fact, it seems like I, I sand one end with uh, 150, well, both ends, with 150 grit, and that's all I needed. And, and uh, that is just sitting on top of the headstock, and I just scrub the end of the lime uh, against that pad. Then I can just touch it up with a, l a little dab more of the dye on a paper towel and uh, take care of those ends. Just using my, uh, I guess that's my detail gouge. Just getting in there, uh, making it smaller, making it as close to my finished product as I can get. Uh, then I come back with my uh, self-made uh, thin parting tool. That's that is just what it looks like. It's a a uh, an old kitchen knife, uh, not really a butcher knife, but it's that style of knife. Uh, it's an old one. Uh, picked it up in a out of a box. Uh, seems like it was a yard sale kind of thing, and the whole box of stuff was only five dollars. And this knife was just one of the many many products that was in that box. Uh, it's like they cleaned out 
drawers throughout the house, threw them all in this box, and this knife was one of them. I, just, I ground all the teeth off. I use it with the back side of the blade down. Uh, what used to be the edge is now on top, but that's all been ground away. And I got a, just a nice uh, a double bevel on the end like most parting tools. And so it's able to get into a very narrow area, and it does a very good job. I, I like it. I use it quite a bit. There I am just getting it out from between centers. Uh, that little end on the top end was a lot tougher than I expected it to be, but it just a couple of wiggles back and forth, and it popped right off. I'll take a utility knife and just trim it back, um, making it ready, just a little light sanding, and then uh, we'll put a little more dye on it with a paper towel. Just popped it off right there, easy as it can be. Again, trim it with a knife, and then we'll sand it with some 150. And my stack of, my, of little squares is just sitting on top of the headstock. I'll just reach over there uh, with the lime and, and just uh, knock that off with that 150 grit. Started to say, I'm not sure what I'm doing right there, but I was um, reorganizing myself, picking up one of my old paper towels instead of getting a fresh one. There's my open container of the green dye, and I'm just going to rub a little of that on the two ends. And it's right about here that I remember, oh, I need to sand the other end. So that's what I do. I am uh, currently sponsored by Axe Wood Paste. I didn't mention that a while ago. and uh, Tom has been so gracious to uh, let me use a 15% discount code. A lot of folks have discount codes that for 10%. Uh, just a few of us that have a 15% code. Um, Tom's given me that, and I'm, I'm very grateful uh, for that myself, but also for you, that you can use that. Uh, in fact, please, let me, let me say please use it. Uh, the more you use it, the more that reflects back that people are watching my videos and that they're hearing about Axe Paste, both the abrasive and the wax, uh, on my videos. And so uh, that's Tom can kind of keep track of that, and, and we will grow together. And I'm, I'm very grateful for his uh, sponsorship. It means a lot. So there's one key lime. Let's put uh, the dye away so we don't spill it. Um, the, the limes are oak. This is not a piece of oak that I'm getting ready to put on. There's my, my chuck going on. I've already prepped this piece of wood. Um, not sure what I'm doing there. It's the wrong end. I must have figured out what I was doing. Oh, no, I've got a tenon on that end. This end up here where my hand is, uh, there's a tenon there as well, but that's just from where I, uh, I, I cut it down. It was much longer. So anyway, there's a, this is a piece, I'm pretty sure this is mulberry. Uh, it was very, very brown. I thought it was a piece of walnut, but it's, it's, uh, it's not, as you can see. Uh, there was some brown there that still got some remnants, but the wood, once you got past that brown, is, is pretty yellow. So uh, we've got it in the chuck. Um, got it at a decent speed. It's not flying. It seems like we're maybe 1,400 RPM, 1,600 RPM, something of that nature. And uh, don't need to true it up a lot. It's a little bit off, but as we, as I turn this next piece, um, it will true itself up. I'm going to make a mistake here in just a minute, and you'll see. You'll know when I do it. Nobody gets hurt. No damage done. Just kind of embarrassment. <laughs> This wood is, well, let me just say, this wood is hard. <laughs> it's very hard. <clears throat> kind of surprised me a little bit at the way I had to uh, slow myself down, kind of take my time turning, uh, especially with it, with it in the chuck like that. The, the tenon I've got in the chuck is not very deep at all. 
Um, but I'm just rounding off this end. And there's a little remnant of the old tenon still on the very end. Right there it was. I just, I was not even into the wood really. I just touched it. And that was all it took. Uh, there's a little roughness on that on that old tenon, and it just caught the the edge of my gouge, and just pulled it right off of of the chuck. Um, I did give the tenon a quick look. There was no damage to the to the tenon right there. You see, I'm taking another look. Um, the only issue that there could have possibly been. Um, there was a little swirl that you probably saw there coming out from the tenon. Uh, it was not cut real, real clean, uh, but it's it's fine. It doesn't come back out of there again. Um, I did go through and make sure that I had tightened the chuck up from more than one point. But here we are. Uh, it's off just a little bit, but it, again, it will square itself up, begin to run true, as I shape this piece of fruit. So, um, Heather, would wind stone, no, I can't think of what her site name is or her, her page name is now. Um, anyway, Heather, was she lives up in Canada and she was turning some fruit out of maple, uh, a maple apple and a maple pear. Um, it sounds kind of interesting to me or odd, uh, not I guess odd more than interesting. Here I turned an, a couple of oak limes and now this mulberry piece, uh, it's not going to be a, a berry of any kind. Um, you'll You'll figure it out here in just a minute. By the way, have you figured the song out yet? If you're of a certain age, you are singing it in your head even as the turning is going on. Bonus points to somebody that can tell me who originally recorded this song without looking it up on Go in Google. You know, without looking it up on the internet doing a Google search or a Bing search or anything like that, who put this song out first? And I'll give you a hint. It was 1971. It's about as early 70s as you can get. But we've already rounded the bottom end here and, and flattened it out just a little bit. Got the top pretty well turned. We're going to start sanding. I showed you there I've got 100 grit sandpaper in my hand. Um, I'm going to sand a bit with this and realize I was just, it was sanding out, but not as quick as I thought it ought to. So I went back to 60 grit, went all the way up to 320, and now I just showed you there, I'm using uh, the same intrinsic colors that I was using, but this time, instead of black and green, I'm using earth, which is a nice brown. Now you know what I'm turning, don't you? I'm pulling the trigger, but nothing happening. Ah, the little compressor was not on. As soon as I hit the button, here comes some brown. Makes that yellow wood look so much richer, so much nicer. I'm gonna do kind of the same process here. We're gonna sand it, then we're gonna dry it, or excuse me, we're gonna apply the brown, I'm going to dry it, and then I'm gonna sand it back. The reason for sanding it back is I'm, I want a, I don't want a dark brown, but I want a nice rich brown. And so that's what we're going to do. Uh, I've got the hair dryer there. I made sure all the dust was out of it uh, before I pointed it at my, at my fruit. There, I just put my hand on it. Not quite dry, but almost. It doesn't take long with this dryer. It dries up very quick. Excuse me, very quickly. The intrinsic colors are, are from the Hampshire Sheen line of finished work or finished products. Um, they are water-based, uh, do an excellent job. But because it's not paint, it's a dye and not paint, I can 
uh, get that hair dryer up pretty close to it. I don't have to worry about it bubbling or anything like that. Here we go with coat number two. We've already sanded it back. Seems like I sanded it back with uh, uh, 150. Just a real quick sanding. It didn't take a whole lot. But you can see there, it's a, it's a nicer brown with the second coat. Had a little too much, so we pour it back. Not a big deal. I'll just empty the gun. You can see there the little remnant sprayed out. It sprayed out right quick. But again, we're going to bring the hair dryer up. We're going to give it a little blow. It goes from that shiny, it goes flat pretty quickly. You can see it drying right in front of your, your eyes. and doesn't take a whole lot. Just speeds the things up. I've sanded it back again a second time. It's a little browner than it was, but I was just showing you this is honey. I'm going to put on just a little bit of honey, uh, kind of one big streak, and then I'm just going to kind of spot hit it here and there. Um, let's turn it off. Now I can concentrate on one little area. This is pretty much the lightest area on the whole piece. And this is just to, to kind of highlight that one little area. Um, if When you look at fruit, it's almost never one solid color. There's usually a, a line or a streak of highlight if there's not a whole other color. Think of an orange. Quite often you'll have a one area that's more green than anything. Uh, apples can be red, yellow, you know, just all kind. Oranges, um, sometimes you'll have all kinds of colors. You'll have green, yellow, red, orange, all on one piece of fruit. It's amazing. So I had the limes that we use black and green. Um, you get some of the dark spots or dark areas because of the black, but the green comes out uh, not. A, it comes out a little darker, but it's more intense. Uh, here we've put on two coats of brown, sanded it back. Now yellow uh, or honey, and I'm going to put some more brown on it. Uh, that honey has been dried, and I'm going to come in and, and hit it here and there um, with the brown. And then we're going to do the whole thing. I'm going to rotate it and apply the brown. But even here, you can see that there's some yellow that's still poking through. It does even at the very, very end. Had a fly on my vacuum that uh, had been bugging me so I sprayed him brown just finishing out the dye that was in my my gun get it good and dry we're going to come back with some more of the polishing restoring paste from Axe just a reminder there Doug15 at checkout that gets you a 15% discount on this wonderful product now, how many fruits do you know of that are brown? I can only think of one. Yeah, it's a coconut. Now do you get the song that I was after? I told you it was a nonsensical song. You put the lime in the coconut, you drink it all up. <laughs> kind of a crazy, crazy song. And it, it, I was listening to it yesterday, and it just repeats itself over and over and over it's not as bad as Louie Louie, but it's uh, it's pretty bad. Just a little bit of a buff. We work it in just a little bit. Again, uh, a little bit of the brown coming off. But this time it's not because of the sanding sealer. I forgot to put sanding sealer on this. So uh, we went from the dye straight to the wax. But it works out fine. It works out fine. The wax will secure that in and uh, seal it off so there won't be any problem with the brown coming off in your hands. I, I handled this coconut a, a, a good bit after I got it off the lathe uh, and uh, no problems. It never did come off on my hands. Uh, the wax is definitely taking care of it. Because we had it in the chuck, the one end has been free from the very beginning, uh, just parting off this back end, just working it down slowly. Again, the, the knife parting tool I have not measured this thing. It's about a sixteenth of an inch wide. It's not very wide at all. 
but it is stiff, and so I can go a little further over the tool rest than most sixteenth of an inch tool rest can or uh, parting tools can work. But here we go. We're just about through. You'll see it start there. It wobbles, and then it's off. Do a little sanding on that top end, and this is the top of the coconut where we parted it off. The other end that was free was the bottom end. That was very intentional. You can see the sanding dust there is quite yellow. Um, convinces me even more. At one point, I thought this might be uh, uh, bow dark or hedge apple or Osage orange, um, but it's not that at all. It's I'm pretty sure it's mulberry. Um, almost as hard as Osage but it's not quite as bright yellow as Osage is. Osage is really, really bright when you first turn it. And then over time, it will uh, darken. It goes to a beautiful, I think it's a beautiful golden brown. And so uh, some people don't like it. Some people think it's an ugly brown, but I think it's very pretty. Um, this piece uh, was almost the same color when I first started. Um, but then as I turned it, I saw the yellow wood inside. I'm just putting my my dies away, keeping them from getting in the floor, getting stepped on, getting lost, whatever. One of these days I'm going to run out of those little samplers. But there you have it. Lime and the coconut. You mix them all up. This is Doug at Wood Spun Round. I hope you've had a good time. If you'll hit the like button and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. If you'll uh, comment and share it, that'll help the, the channel as much as anything. I appreciate you being with me. Hope you can be with me again. And when we do meet up again, I hope you're able to spin them around.